Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host Jeffrey Lazarus, and you are watching Welcome to Pacific Rim, the video game on the Gaming Vector. Oh lord, two weeks in a row we get movie tie-in games. Actually, this came out last week, but being that there's nothing really new on Xbox Live Arcade or on Xbox in general this week, then we're going to take a step back and take a look at the Pacific Rim game. So let's go ahead and hit the start button, and as soon as we get loaded in here, we can talk about a couple of things that I'm a little split on. So, as you can see, this game has a single player, it has customization of your Jaegers, which if you're not familiar with Pacific Rim, your Jaegers are the giant mechs that they use to fight the Kaiju, which are the giant monsters. You can also customize Kaiju as well, because this game does have a multiplayer mode, this is essentially a fighting game for all intents and purposes. You do also have leaderboards, of course, achievements, help and options, downloadable content. Now, if we jump into help and options, we can see our basic controls. So that gives you your left and right attack, special attack, guard, your dodge, so on and so forth. Under game options, we can show the HP and energy gauge. I don't know why you wouldn't want to show those. You can also show the timer, as well as affect your brightness, music volume, and sound effect volume. Now, before we get into looking at the actual gameplay, I want to look at the customization and downloadable content specifically. So, if we jump into customize here, you can see there's a shop. We can also customize our characters. Let's go ahead and jump into the shop real quick. Now, you'll see in the upper right, current EXP 786. That's that's one match of EXP with a little bit left over from a couple of previous fights. And you can see we can get boost items. Now, these boost items cost in EXP, and as you can see, they're temporary boosts. So, for instance, this will give you plus 10% hit points for a match. This one, let's see here, Attack Enhancer lasts for 30 seconds and gives you higher attack speed and attack power. So these are temporary boosts that you can buy using your experience. So you can get probably, if you're buying the cheaper ones, you can probably get two to three, two to three of these for every match you play. Also, you can get new abilities. As you can see, things such as melee power up, attack power plus 10 points. These are permanently equipped to your Jaeger, which we will look at that momentarily. And then here we can buy Jaeger parts. As you can see, these are probably about a match's worth of experience for each individual part at level 1. You can also see how they will statistically change with the customized robot that you're using. So, speaking of customization, let's go ahead and get into the actual customization menu here. And once this loads up, we will be able to look at, so we have eight different slots for customized, oh, we have more than eight, actually. Oh, we have 30 slots for customized characters. I doubt that you'll ever need all of them. So here you can see we can level up our uh, Jaeger in this case, almost said mech there again. And as you can see, we can spend experience to level up, say, our hit points or our attack power, so on and so forth, which will, over time, increase the level of that particular part of the Jaeger. So the Titan legs or the Titan body, for instance, can eventually be built up to level 3. So you can get all of this stuff by simply playing the single player, earning experience, and buying it. Same with setting abilities. You can see right now we have one ability slots. I have melee power up level one equipped. You can see it increases my total attack power. We can also configure a move set. So our special attack, we can have this shoulder charge or we can have this double axe handle or alternatively we can have this double axe handle which is the bloody same thing just with the character stepping forward with a different foot. We can also do our ranged attack, which actually I want the plasma caster rather than the pulse dispenser. We can do our power move. I'm assuming we can unlock more of these. At least I would hope that there are more of these because it's 
really kind of a uh, small set of moves. As you can see, we can also do our, what were these called? Fatal Assault moves. Now, if we go down into Assembly, you can see we can swap out individual parts. So, for instance, for some reason I bought an extra Titan body, but if I wanted to swap out with a different body piece, you can do full customization of all... Oh, pardon me. You can do full customization of all five of the body parts of your mech, including having different arms. Now, here's where I have a bit of an issue. So, you can do body coloring, reflection, and logos. If I go into body coloring, you'll see changes cannot be saved because you haven't purchased the Jaeger Designer feature. Please purchase from the download content menu to make changes to your appearance. So here we can actually make the changes and we can look at all the different things that we can do, such as changing paint schemes, things of that nature. However, we can't actually save any of it. It would probably be better to actually show that on the body, but... So as you can see, you can do some pretty cool little uh, customizations here if you so desired. However, you need the Jaeger Designer from the downloadable content menu. No, we do not want to go to the shop. So let's go take a look at the downloadable content menu. Now, this is a $10 game straight up. So you can buy it in its current form, the way that I'm playing it right now, for $10. But if we jump into the downloadable content, we'll see that it has essentially microtransactions. So uh, once we acquire the content list here, we'll be able to look here at customization. So there is Jaeger Designer, 240 Microsoft points. That is roughly $3. Buying that for $3 will let us do all of the aesthetic customization, as well as we can get some extra pattern sets or extra logos that we can slap onto our Jaeger. Now this stuff... I wish it was in the game for the $10 price tag. I honestly do, because this is what I really wanted to be able to do, is really customize it to look just the way I want. However, since these are all aesthetic customizations, and none of them actually affect the gameplay in the multiplayer, aside from just the general look of your mech, or your Jaeger, then I don't have so much of a problem with them charging for this. It feels a little bit like a cash grab, and maybe it is, but at the same time, it could be much, much worse. Also, we can go in and buy Jaeger parts. Now, as you can see, for $5, we could get the full part set for the Titan at level 3, or we could get the individual parts for a dollar each, and we can do that for all of the different variations now, normally I would say that this is buying power because, you know, I could buy a fully upgraded, whoop, I could buy a fully upgraded Titan set for $5 and just bypass the entire progression. However, because you can buy all of these things with XP, including all of these abilities, as well as all these boost items then I don't have so much of a problem with it because it's just a matter of whether you want to make the cash investment or the time investment in playing the game. However, I do feel that, at least during the early weeks that this game is out, which is going to be the you know kind of highest point for multiplayer most likely, that if you aren't spending money, you're probably going to be outclassed by people who are spending money. They're probably going to have way better gear and fully customized Jaegers built out exactly the way they want them. So, that was mainly just a PSA to let you know what you're getting into. Now, what I'm actually going to do is jump into the single player real quick, and we'll go into normal mission. Now, as you can see, I completed the tutorial, I completed a couple of the missions, and I'm probably actually going to jump back and do Electroshocker, just so you can see the gameplay. And as you can see, by doing the mission, we will get a boost item, we will also get, conceivably get Jaeger parts, if we do well enough. So, as you can see, we have 
three different stock mechs to choose from the Gypsy Danger, the Cherno Alpha, and the Crimson Typhoon, as well as a couple of Kaiju, the Knife Head, and the Leatherback. And then we also have our customized one here, which I, of course, named after my gamer tag because it was the first thing that came into my mind. And as you can see, if we look at the stats here, the Gypsy Danger, which is essentially the same the same exact one as the one that I created, actually has better stats, most likely because it's already leveled up probably to level 3, so perhaps if you're doing the multiplayer and you don't want to spend the money, maybe you can play with these particular mechs and still be competitive. So let's go ahead and I will just take my customized one here. And we'll jump in and look at the combat. Now here we can select our boost items. So as you can see, the power booster, speed up, HP booster, so on and so forth. I'm not going to worry too much about those. Now, as we jump in here, you'll see this is a three-minute fight, one round. So we'll probably get right around five to 700 experience for this, which will let you get one or two levels on a particular part of your mech. So not terribly difficult to actually earn the experience and level up your Jaeger without actually spending the cash. However, this is where the game runs into some problems. So this is a fighting game at its core. Now, it does have a couple of interesting mechanics, such as, well, not that one particularly. But when you get knocked down, you have to button mash to get up. If you look down at the bottom left of the screen, you can see the health on both of my pilots, since the Jaegers use two pilots. If one of them goes down, then you'll lose some functionality. You'll also see in between my health bars, there's actually an energy bar that goes up, and then it goes down whenever I use an attack. Also, we can fire some ranged attacks at this guy. Let's... Ch oh, we can't... Why can I still not charge... Oh, because I didn't save. I actually wanted to be able to charge up my, uh, my ranged attack there. As you can see, we can do some dodging around, and so on and so forth. There we get that shoulder bash. Now, as you can see, we've actually got experience popping up down there at the bottom. And we have a power move available. And that'll allow us to do a ton of damage if it hits, but it also burns about 40% of our uh, built-up energy. Now this guy's down, and we can just kind of stomp on him until he jumps up. So, now, as for the issues that I have with this game... Oh, one of my pilots is almost... No, he is going to die. Oh, maybe not. But, as you can see, the camera itself... Oh, boy. Do the power move. Kill him. The camera itself is fixed. More or less fixed. So, rather than doing what a traditional 3D fighting game would do, which would be try and move the camera around so that characters are on each side of the screen. There you can see we got about 600 experience and a silver medal. But instead of the camera moving around to keep both characters on either side of the screen, which in turn makes the game usually play much better because you can really track where everybody is and what the distance between characters is. Instead, in this one the camera is fixed so that when you say move around behind a creature which I'm going to try and do here in a minute or alternatively he moves behind you that parts of the character are blocked which makes it hard to tell exactly what's going on it also makes it a little difficult to tell whether you are in range for the attack that you're wanting to do now also the attacks are rather slow and I I'm not putting that down as a knock on the game I think that was probably a deliberate design decision Let's see if we can get around behind him see now our character is at least partially obscured and it can be a little difficult to judge your distance also this thing is beating the crap out of me also, you can, oh, with some characters, charge up your normal attacks. So I say, it, it uh, would appear to be a deliberate design decision that the attacks would actually come out, you know, fairly slowly, since this is supposed to be a giant robot fighting a giant monster. 
Let's just see if we can't fire at him and get him to back off a minute. Oh, boy. You can see right there we had another instance of I was behind the enemy character, so it made it rather difficult for me to see where I was going. And as you can see, also one of our pilots is dead, so now if I try and use my attacks on the X button... I simply don't have access to it anymore. So the more damage you actually take, the... Yeah, and we lose the fight, but that's alright. The more damage you actually take, it can actually hinder your ability to use your attacks and be able to take out your opponent. And you see we get a meager amount of experience for losing the fight. So... Back to what I was originally saying. The the combat is slow, and I think that was a deliberate choice because of the nature of what kind of characters we're using here. However, it makes it so that the fighting really isn't all that exciting or visceral. It can be visceral when you land like one of those big charged punches or something like that, but for the most part, this title just really isn't that good as a fighting game. Now, once again, it is a $10 game. And I can tell you that there is, at least at the moment, as you can see by looking at the online leaderboards, there are a substantial amount of people playing. And you've got guys here with, you know, seven, 800 wins, so... There are a lot of people playing the game, at least for right now. Although I don't know how long that's actually going to last. So, my recommendation is, unless you really liked seeing that type of gameplay that we just had, the real kind of slow, methodical fighting, then I would probably steer clear of this game. But, you know, if you like that, and if you don't mind the grind to customize your character, or alternatively spending the extra money to customize your character, which you will have to do if you want to get any of the new color schemes or things like that, then perhaps this is a game you should check out. I would recommend, I believe, I believe there is a trial available, so if... Seeing the gameplay I've showed you here hasn't really convinced you one way or the other. Then you may be able to get the trial and test out the game yourself. And just see how you feel about the controls and about the uh, kind of slow fighting style. But for me personally, I just don't feel that this game is necessarily worth spending the $10 to buy... And then the other $3 to customize my character. And then maybe spending money on parts to get him built up the way I want so that I can compete in multiplayer with other people. Or to grind, you know, a lot of time in the single player to really level up the normal way. So that's going to be about it for the Pacific Rim video game. It's... Not awful, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily worth your money either. So, you may hang on to that $10 and see if hopefully in the next couple weeks we get a uh, better arcade title. Because right now the pickings are kind of slim. But that's going to be it for me today. As always, I have been your host Jeffrey Lazarus and thank you for watching.